like that all the time. Yeah, it never goes inside her mouth. Millie really stands out to me as being one of the most unique cases I've seen for two main reasons. First of all, it's the length of her tongue. But secondly, it's the fact she really can't pull that tongue back in. And that's what's got me confused. I mean, with pugs, the challenge is the fact that their, their face is already quite flat. Yeah. And so there is a lot that needs to fit inside yeah. a very small mouth. Yes. But it's too long for her normal functioning. She was about 12 months of age when it started to come out and it's just gotten longer and longer. When I take Millie to the park, her tongue will drag on the ground and becomes dirty. I'm a little bit concerned because we are starting to see the signs of, of the fact that tongue's never really been inside a mouth. Yeah, it does get dry. Yeah, I mean, yeah. the end of it there is, is quite cracked uh -huh. and also a bit swollen too. You've got to remember that dogs can't sweat. So the only way for them to really effectively cool themselves down is through panting. And a black pug like her needs to pant a lot just to keep cool. If she can't pant normally, she's at risk of heat stroke, which could kill her. She may not have been just purely born this way. There may have been something that's happened to her um, or some other problem that's forcing that tongue out. Okay. Chris wants to try and get a closer look inside Millie's mouth to find out the cause of her problem. <laughs> Is she, is she normally quite shy around her face? Um, yeah, she doesn't like being examined at all. She? No. The best way for me to examine inside her mouth is in the vet clinic. So if it's okay, I'd like to meet you guys back there yeah. now. We'll have a good look over her and hopefully try to get some steps in place today to turn her life around. Sounds good. Each and every day that this problem is left unchecked, that tongue dries out further and it becomes heavier. The heavier it is, the more it pulls out of the mouth and therefore the longer it gets. We have to act now and we have to act decisively. Up here, come on, let's, let's go. go. Come on, let's go. Good girl. Chris has asked Fiona and her son Brandon to bring Millie into the Bondi clinic for further examination. The whole idea of bringing Millie in here now is really to have a closer look inside that mouth. All I know at the moment is that tongue is incredibly long but what I need to work out right now is the cause. Good girl. It's quite incredible. Yeah? Because her, her tongue never actually goes back inside no, her mouth. No, ever, there. ever, yeah. It, it moves, it can move in and out, yeah. but, you know, it'll only move maybe an inch or so. Yeah. I'm just going to poke and prod her in different places okay. to see if she responds. <laughs> When I do touch around her eyes, she blinks, but slowly. In fact, she's so slow, she'll let me touch my finger onto her eyeball. That's not normal. All right. So, her heart rate's high, but her heart sounds okay. I mean, okay. There's no nervous. Uh -huh. Good. There's no uh -huh. irregularities there. It's impossible to know whether Millie at some stage suffered some sort of trauma to the head or maybe even was born with some sort of defect there. The nerves and the muscles aren't firing as they should, which means that everything is slowed down and it could explain why that tongue pokes out but doesn't come back in. So I'm just going to attach this. Chris is still anxious to get and a closer look a inside, inside Millie's mouth. mouth. Yeah. Still resisting. Yeah. It's not easy. This is clearly her Achilles heel, and she does not want me going anywhere near it. It's okay, I'm not hurting. Finally, I can get my throat scope inside Millie's mouth. I don't know if you can see, but her tongue is actually sitting on what is a really thickened, swollen membrane there. Okay. That shouldn't really be that size. Okay. Is that because of the size of the tongue, or? Well, it's part of it. Um, the other thing is that the more a dog struggles to breathe and the more forces they're going through the back of that throat that's already already small, right. the more things become under stress. We need to take drastic action here, but I'm not sure how they're going to handle what I have in mind to fix this problem. What I'm proposing is we take her up to Sash okay. yep. and Andrew Marcheski and I will uh -huh. Operator on her. Good. So we actually need to remove a large portion of that tongue 
Is that the only option? Yeah. Yeah. I'm scared. I'm scared for Millie and putting her under an anaesthetic in such a, a um, serious operation. It's not going to be easy, but this will give her the best outcome. Let's do it. Do it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm scared, but let's yeah. do it. Yeah. Andrew, how are you, mate? Chris, how are you? Good to see you. Yeah. Now, this is Fiona. Hi, Fiona. And of course, oh, this is Millie. The Chris and Millie Fiona have arrived at the Bondi Referral Hospital sash with little pug Millie. Well, come on in and we'll have a look. Yeah, all right. After you. Chris wants specialist surgeon Andrew Marchewski to check out the pug's massively long tongue. All right. It's dry and horrible, isn't it? Oh, sweet. That can't be very comfortable. Millie's tongue is obviously very confronting to look at, but it is actually also painful. You only have to touch it really lightly and she's trying to get away from you. She says, I'm sick of people looking at my tongue. How are you poking at it? Good girl. I know. There's plenty of it, isn't there? It's you just huge. got spare. It's huge. Really, with a tongue like that, the only thing that we can do is surgery to, to reduce the size of it, because we don't. I think it's only going to get worse and I think eventually it might even sort of die and that'll cause her a real problem and make her really sick. So we, we've really got to fix this now. The procedure Millie needs is called a glossectomy, where the damaged part of her tongue is removed. The risk immediately is blood loss. The tongue's a really vascular organ um, and it's partially that because you know, the tongue is used in dogs for them to cool down. Yeah. So it's got to have lots of veins, so when they're panting, it can, they lose heat through that area. Yeah. That's during surgery, but afterwards as well, um, if it bleeds and they get a whole lot of bruising, that can cause airway problems. Okay. Because you suddenly they have this big bruised tongue and they can't breathe well, so we'll have to watch that. What, what will the tongue look like after <laughs> surgery? Will she be disfigured at all? Or? Um, I think it'll be better than that. Yeah. <laughs> But it will still look like a yeah, normal the guys, tongue? Uh, yeah, well certainly, I'll try and, yeah. we'll try and shape it. Um, I actually use a marker pen. Okay. So we'll draw on beforehand and just say, okay, is that a nice shape? Okay. And, and go from there. Uh -huh. There's a possibility that we'll leave it so she, you can still see a little bit of the tongue poking uh -huh. out. I think I'd rather go to that than take too much. She still needs to be able to pant. To pant, exactly down. right, yeah. exactly right. Yeah. You know, especially being a black pug. Yeah. Okay, well let's get her in. Hospital. Okay. And uh, we'll get this done. Okay, wonderful. You can see how much Fiona loves Millie, and I know Fiona just wants to get Millie out of any pain that she might be in and give her a, a good quality of life, and that's what we've got to do. Look after her. I promise I'll look after okay. her. Come on. I've got a Millie at home too that's <laughs> black Labrador, so okay. it doesn't quite have the tongue size, but anyway. All right. Thank you. Ciao. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Go on, Chuck. We'll you get you sorted. Yeah, thank you. I know she's in really good hands, so Dr. Chris and Andrew will look after her. But um, I'll be anxious until it's till it's over. But we're looking at really twice the length it should be. Yeah, we really are. Yeah. Goodness gracious. Next day at SASH, little pug Millie is being prepped for her tongue surgery. Millie's got a really long tongue, and when you look at it, it's really dry and horrid, so we're actually going to remove that excessive part of her tongue. Chris and Andrew will be working together to perform the delicate procedure called a glossectomy. I think the first thing we've got to do, we've got this mark, but I think if we can make another one sort of just inside that, but just with a little bit of curve. Yeah. When you start cutting, all this gets distorted, and if you haven't drawn a line, you just don't know where you are, and it ends up really ragged. So, I so think the tongue's a muscle, so it could easily get yeah, stuck contracting up. up. Sure. I think you're fairly happy with that. Yeah. Now it is going to bleed because there's lots of blood vessels all the way along this yeah. and there's a couple of sort of big lingual arteries are up here but the veins are along here and they'll actually probably be the hardest to get to stop. 
all the blood vessels in the tongue are really intimately associated with the muscle and the tongue is just a big muscle. And there's no way that I can work around them. So what I've got to do is, as I'm cutting through it, I'm going to cut through these blood vessels and as soon as I do that, I'll just have to cauterise them to stop them bleeding. I might actually, if you grab the tongue there, See if we can control a bit of these before we go too much further. We've just hit one of these blood vessels, so Chris has got his swab and straight on it, and now I've got to get zap it, for want of a better word, to stop it bleeding. And I've got to do it properly, because if it starts leaking later when she's waking up, that could be a bit of a disaster for us. So try and stick to the deeper tissue. What we're using to seal that blood vessel is electrocautery. It basically runs a really small electrical current directly into that blood vessel and stops the bleeding straight away. It's not, bad. It's not too bad, is it? Let's just keep cutting. That's the thing is that we actually do want blood supply there. We, we, do, we don't right. want it to don't want it totally stop it. Mm. And the main one we're worried about was lingual arteries. Yeah, the... it's sort of the one on each side. Oh, here's one. Hello. Oh, look at that. Straight away, that spurting of the blood tells you that we've hit the lingual artery. That pressure is quite significant. We need to get this one tied off quickly. Gotcha. In a lot of surgeries, you can be quite tactical and really work your way around blood vessels. With this one, though, there's no choice. We have to power straight through. It's in there, one of those veins in there. After a careful combination of cutting and cauterising, Andrew and Chris have finally removed the excess tongue. It's a big chunk of tongue. That's a big chunk of tongue, isn't it? Yeah. It's huge. It's really big in size, but you look back in Millie's mouth and all of a sudden, she looks normal. We might just take a little bit of this bulk out of this muscle out the front as well, otherwise it's going to be really non-tapered, so get ready with your swab, I think. It's important that we get the tongue shape right, because if it's sort of all squared off, I think it won't work as well as it should. Um, so we've got to make sure that that tongue looks like a normal tongue. Oh, we're late. Go on, hold that. Grab a hold of that. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay, great. The final stage of Millie's transformation is to stitch up her brand new tongue. Nearly there, just got the last one to place now and a knot to tie and we're done. So, I mean, it's sitting nicely in the mouth. We can get it out by the under teeth, which is what we want. Mm. And she's just going to have to relearn how to eat and drink. But well, it's, it's going to be a messy few days anyway. It is going to be a messy few days. Messy few weeks and, and months learning yeah, again, yeah, exactly. but she'll get there. All right. Let's wake her up. Wake her up, I think. Even though Millie doesn't know it, all of a sudden her life has just become just so much more comfortable. Hey Mel, wait until you see the new you. The key is the next few days. She has to stay relaxed, otherwise one of those blood vessels could lose its seal. If all of a sudden she does start bleeding, we have another emergency on our hands. As Millie is wheeled into recovery, Chris can now share the good news with the pug's devoted owner. I didn't think you'd leave. <laughs> How are you? Well, things have, um, things have actually gone okay. Oh, really? Yeah. No so, issues with bleeding? No, no, I mean, look, a normal amount of bleeding. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so we've, we've managed to get through there and and, uh, and tie all those blood vessels and, and keep everything under control, so... So she's going to be OK? Yeah. It's yeah. the best news it is. possible. It yeah. is. Yeah. I really want to go and see Millie now, but I understand that Millie needs to rest to heal. So um, I'll look forward to seeing her in a few days. The important thing for you though, you're going to relax again because mm -hmm. you're through the hardest mm -hmm. part. Thank you. I will. Okay. I'll see you soon. Okay, see you later. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure this news is a massive relief for Fiona, but I guess we all won't be truly relaxed until Millie goes home, until we know this recovery over the next few days has been a success. It's a critical time. Some swelling could develop in her tongue. She could even have a bleeder there. So we just have to remain vigilant. Have a look at your tongue. Okay. 
We can't see it. That's a good start, isn't it? At SASH, it's been three days since the much-needed surgery on Millie's tongue, and the brave little pug is recovering well. There it is. That's a good girl. So it's a bit swollen, but it's pretty good. Hey, there it, oh, there we go. There we go. That looks great. Hey. I'm really happy with how Millie's tongue is looking. It's shorter for starters, which is what we wanted. There's a little bit of swelling there, but not too much. So she's pretty much right to go home. So I'm sure Fiona will be happy to get her there as well. It's been an emotional journey for the pup's devoted owner. Fiona can't wait to get her much loved girl home. I'm looking forward to seeing her without her tongue hanging out and hopefully start of a, a new happy life for her. There she is. There she is. Hello. Who's that? Hey. Who's that? I know she didn't desert oh, you after all. Hey. 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 Good girl. Do you remember me? I, I think she hey. remembers. It really is great to see these two reunited and I know Fiona's just ecstatic with the results of the surgery. Yeah, so she's even more beautiful than she was before now. But, um, I think you'll find she'll be much less messier and she'll cope with eating better. Yeah, I think so. It'll take a little while to learn to use the, the fact that it's a bit shorter, but she'll get there for sure. So happy. I think she'll live a lot more um, comfortable life. You know, she'll be able to eat and drink and, and, and yeah, with ease now, you know, whereas before she found it really difficult. But really, no, it just, it, it really couldn't have gone any better. So, yeah. Is the best yeah. Possible for yeah. Us. yeah. No, it's a pleasure. She's a great little girl. Yeah. Hey, ain't you? Is it all right? I can't thank Andrew and Dr Chris and the whole team um, enough for what they have done for, for, for Millie. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.